everybody, and no, it's been a while, but welcome to the Board Uplander Show. Yep, it's me, the Metaverser, one more time. I'm without Buck because he's on vacation, but we got a lot of stuff to cover. This is going to be a long video, so please watch to the end and like, subscribe, and follow me on the other social medias. We got Instagram, we got TikTok. Let's get into it. Uh, we got our samples back from the printer that looks great we're using the flam app that you can download for free to register your cards now we're going to make a bunch of them for all up lenders we're going to put them on a server for free and you can uh you know look at your own properties and then we got this beauty look at that crystal block explorers come and get them all right let's get into it cars in the metaverse these are the starter racer cities and at the South Southwest conference, they really got into it, got into some other details about the game, but the uh, gameplay is amazing. Uh, you'll be able to ride in cars for real and drive through the uh, Upland metaverse. I, it's going to be incredible. I'm excited to see what kind of graphics they allow us to put on buildings to promote. Uh, let's get into it. Here's the uh, ad for South by Southwest, and let's listen. Oh, shout out to the homie Texas AG. He was out there getting front row video. Up Check it out. We are basically building an economy uh, ground up. And everything we cast, every new feature, every new value has an entire ecosystem around it that empowers the community and the participants to not just extract entertainment value out of it, but also participate in the whole value creation and extraction system. So, you know, things like, for, for example, we started with car manufacturing, right? And we are working to enable everybody to be able to establish their own car brands in the metaverse and not just bring the brands in. So we look at things as though the brands are here to basically empower, to create the trust, to kind of like jumpstart everything. But we want everybody to be able to participate in also creating their own value. And you hear Aiden there uh, explain how it's player generated content and player generated activity that will create the most value for the Upland NFTs, the cars, everything, right? So uh, they continue, right? Let's continue. They go on and they talk about the other stuff that brings value to Upland and NFTs also through player generated content. And it was really exciting to hear some of the revelations. Let's check it out. And now for the first time, only because because these two experiences exist and become a reality, you can be a passenger in a car, put on a headset, and now you're driving in the Upland Metaverse. And you're looking around you and you're saying, and this is the starting point for a lot of development that could go in and casting experiences and utility that combines both of these technologies. It's pretty much amazing. And, and then the glue that will put everything together are the communities. So it's going to be the Hololite community meeting the Upland community, cross-pollinating, creating values for, for each other, and uh, everything served through what is critically to be an open metaverse. And now, did you listen to how many times he said communities and creating value? Yeah, just like how Buck recommends us buying and joining together to create a strong community. Let's keep listening. A uh, device, uh, a personal device, VR goggles, uh, our application will be installed of it. You put it on in the car and it automatically synchronizes the motion and the location of the car with the content being displayed. Um, so you're literally driving through the metaverse and making use of the physics and the location where the car is traveling. And you can imagine all types of contents um, that uh, are in sync with the motion of the car. And that leads me kind of like to the second reasoning, which is we wanted to strengthen the notions of what we call virtual localities in Upland. Because imagine, for example, Upland basically on, the, on its very base layer, it's a real estate uh, platform, right? You can you can own land, you can cultivate it, you can build on top of it, you can build businesses and communities around it. But what is the what, what is the, the kind of like the purpose of a, of a local community if you can just magically teleport suddenly to, to New York and then interact with that? Like you want to strengthen the, those localities to create special um, uh, basically uh, communities around those, and then also give the uh, participants the ability to create value, because if I invest in my neighborhood, if I put lots of out of the course items and put parks and gardens and create uh, meta ventures around them that gives both like a mix of cafes where people can socialize and the Walmarts of the world where streets would have lots of secondary sellers and car showrooms, 
if I go f as, as a community member to invest in all of that, what is the purpose if somebody can magically teleport and then jump in on the community? A group of 100 people come together to develop a neighborhood uh, in Upland. You want to make sure that they have the infrastructure to maintain that value and not have it like magically disappear because you don't have just what they're talking. But and you know the buck and me, the metaverser, love how they're stressing player generated value and communities and how our investment will pay off in the end. Check it out. You're going to also be able to use Spark to charge your car. So because if you're going to if you're going to on a trip from um, San Francisco, like a cross country cannonball from San Francisco to, uh, to New York, for example, you're going to have to stop along the way and charge your car. So either with your own Spark or maybe somebody will provide your service by giving you their Spark to charge your car along the way. Um, so that's that's that. We have a f another future token called STEM, and this will be used to create life in Upland. So trees, animals, pets, stuff like that. A bit more into the future, but that's the Upland ecosystem again, based on true ownership of not just your NFTs, but your resources that you use either to acquire them or to create them. Um, we started started Hollowright to become an open open ecosystem for car manufacturers, creators and also headsets. We're very fortunate to um, work with HTC Vive um, and have the first um, Holoride Ready headset uh, coming from them uh, because they also follow a very open approach. And in terms of content creation, we have an Elastic SDK because the content we're, we're enabling for it, we call Elastic Content. So you can download our Elastic SDK. It's a plug-in to the Unity game. And so we do start publishing as Holoride because we need to make sure that it complies to all the standards that are necessary in the automotive space. But uh, we, we work very closely with creators. So if you have some ideas and you want to come up with a Holoride, let us know and we'll we'll figure it out but you can already download our sdk and play around with it um, and sooner or later we'll open it up to more creators and not just in these studios so everyone who wants to trade with our tech should trade with our tech and here we end with my favorite part uh check out what uh niall says about um his desire for the next five years and listen to how it matches to what the buck is doing check it out but, um, yeah what i what i would love to see in five years time that all of us jointly fill the still empty term metaverse with life because currently it's not really tangible for most people um and and there is no clear definition everybody has a different understanding but that it definitely should incorporate if many of the ideas um, around an open very accessible way of, of having a spatial web um, and which is uh, heavily community driven this uh, this this is something i would like to see and wow wasn't that some great stuff i really enjoyed the talk about community driven value now let's get into our first uplander interview with the legendary coop Let's check it out. Hey, yo, Coop, welcome to the Board Uplander Show. Thank you for taking your time to answer some questions. We really want to get to know the Uplander and what it takes to be one. Yo, what's up? This is Coop. Oh, thanks for having me on, man. Um, one of the best things about Upland, is you can do whatever you want to do. You can play the game however you would like to play it. Yo, I totally agree, homie. Uh, that's what I also like about Upland is that I can use my strategy and my experience in business and use that as my technique, right? And for Detroit, what technique, what kind of strategies did you use to get the collection you got there? And what was your first opening city? So Detroit was different. Uh, the Bronx and L.A. just was so totally different. The, the strategy for Detroit was go in with limited exposure, pick up well-known areas, flip it before reveal. So I got some West Grand Boulevard and some Woodward, and I've already flipped it for two and a half X. To keep, I got some in downtown. I got one Greek town, and I got one by Ford Field. So those are... Those are some that I wanted. I don't know if I flip the Greek town if it's a collection. Maybe the one by Ford Field. I I won't flip that. That'll be something I keep. I like keeping stuff by stadiums and arenas, but I'm a big sports guy, so it makes sense. Uh, as far as my first city, 
I came in right after Santa Cruz had gotten done, so I didn't get to take part in it at all. So the next one was Kansas City and Rutherford. Oh, wow. So you started in Kansas City, Rutherford? That was your first city? Oh, wow. I pay much respect to the OGs that started in those Tier 2, Tier 3. Now, some of them are considered Tier 5 cities. And what was it? What was the experience like? First-hand knowledge here, y'all. Check it out. We all know what happened with Kansas City and Rutherford. They delayed it, delayed it, ended up they actually dropped it <clears throat> while I'm on the beach with my wife and kids. So didn't take part. I just met some stuff when I get back to the room later at night. So my first actual city release ended up being New Orleans. Love New Orleans, so I was glad I was able to take part in it. It was much more a grab to hold than grab to flip city for me. Wow, yeah. Um, I've been wanting to break into NOLA for some time, but that's great that that was your first city because I heard it was low cost, you know, low entry point, kind of like Detroit was, and I've been seeing some new money rolling hot from Detroit. Thank you, Coop, for that interview. Let's move on. So I was sitting around watching the Upland Auction House and a Detroit property came up. My wife, eyes and ears perked up at the sight of the Queen. A childhood home coming up for auction. Uh, we bid on it. My wife was like, oh my God, it'd be funny if, uh, you know, they would uh, mention your name. And they did. And uh, we won the auction. And check this out. Congratulations, Metaverser. For those of you that don't know, Metaverser actually does have a YouTube channel. Uh, and during the Super Bowl, he put up posters of Upland all around the Super Bowl. Super cool. Go check out his YouTube channel. Metaverse, if you're here in chat, feel free to drop, feel free to drop a link to your channel. And that was capped off with winning the Block Explorer for the Detroit Trader. It's a beautifully designed piece. I'm proud to have it, um, but it is uh, going for best offers. And I got season tickets. It was a great week to Universal Studios in Hollywood, California. If you are in L.A. and got season tickets, join us. Join me. Let's have fun imagining Upland in the Universal Studios metaverse. Now, finally, uh, Los Angeles Discovery Tour came around and... Oh my God. Check this out. We had a property as part of the tour. Galco Soda Shop, one of our family favorites, and in the write-up for Highland Park, mentioned another property, the Billie Eilish House. Yeah, that's how we roll at the buck. Now we're getting into some collectibles that I have for auction on the website. You'll hear me talk about it on Discord. Uh, this is a hand-drawn uh, comic book cover of the comic book Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters. We got a new partnership with chi -Town NFTs. And shout out to the Metaverse Street Journal. Y'all doing some good work. N newcomers, anybody coming in new, check out Radish Head and Nerds Logic to learn uh, the analytics of the game. And finally... Go send uh, your Block Explorer to a virtual tour of Dr. Green Thumbs, owned by legendary hip-hop artist Cypress Hill. Check out the QR code. It leads you to the VR tour. Uh, send a like by sending a send. And that's it, y'all. We're going to take it out with a really cool augmented reality video that I created for um, the prize winner. Uh, Fate Black Magic, you know who you are, homie. Um, he won the silent auction for this Justice League $2 bill designed by graffiti artist Renzi.